At Becker Elementary, not every lesson is indoors. With a trek across the street to their green classroom, they dig into gardens that extend the curriculum through hands-on science and ecology in a living space. As students plant and nurture, they cultivate patience and problem solving along with good taste. I've had the benefit of working with second graders and fifth graders as a, as a volunteer teacher. And it has been an, a remarkable learning experience for me. Each class has its own specified garden space and we work with them throughout the year to learn about gardening. We learn about the seasons of various vegetable plants and learning about ones that you can plant in the fall versus the spring. And they follow it through from beginning to the end. Other Austin Independent School District fifth graders grow to learn through the City of Austin's Earth Camp Gardens. Earth Camp is an award-winning water quality field science program where students spend four days at outdoor sites learning about stewardship of their water resources. A class from Blazier Elementary is one that finished Earth Camp at the Green Classroom. I just know that I had a lot of fun when I was a kid helping my mother. A lot of them don't have their own homes. I mean, they do a lot of rentals in, in our area. Some of them do, but I think it's also fun it's for them to at least get out there and see some of this, or, you know, what it's like to get into a garden. Um, and some of them might take it on the responsibility to do it at home as well. Children see how to make compost and learn why it's better than fertilizers that create algae when they leach into the watershed. How many of you have families that compost? Now, where do I put all this? In the compost. Trash. Compost, that's right. Just get in there. Keep on shaking. Growing a little seed or plant that they can eat is a major hit. Oh, spinach, I love spinach. All right. Here you go. All right, you have broccoli, you have spinach, and you have Swiss chard. Okay, so let's go find our spots. So what you're going to do is dig a, a little hole that's, you want it to be as deep as this pot. Okay? There you go, there you go. And now, we're going to put it in here. There we go. Harvesting totally rocks. Well, these are radishes. Have y'all ever eaten radishes? Yeah, they're my favorite. Yeah. The peel off a of radish, but do you see how that's kind of black and has the dirt embedded in it? Yes. So I'm peeling it just for that reason. But, mm. What does that taste like? Yeah, spicy. Ah, hot. Since bugs like gardens too, children identify beneficial insects that control the pests. If the garden needs extra help, they see how to do it without pesticides. People will say like, oh, they're under, they're underground, and then they will look underground and there's nothing, and then they'll say, oh, they don't know that we're under the stones. But then we check. Weeds come up for every gardener too. What do they put on them to make them go away? Weed killer. Weed killer, yes, it's called herbicide. Now, if herbicide were to get in the creek, do y'all know what would happen? Every lesson connects to the watershed and how what we put on the ground affects the water that we drink. Remember at Barton Springs, where you saw that fault that was on the diagonal? These are cubes that it show different areas around Austin. And what they are doing is learning about the watershed, the land on top, and the groundwater, the land underneath, and different things that affect that water. We think that's an oil spill. It's showing about mm, the Edwards limestone because it, it, that looks like the entrance of the dome. But the land feels like where all the trash is, like where the pollution is in the water. With a model of the Bolden Creek watershed, students deposit drops of colored water to indicate fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, soap, and even pet waste. Then they simulate rain three times. Two, three, four, five. Stop. One, two, three. All right. So did our watershed eventually get clean? As it washed away, did it harm everything in the creek as yes. it went down? Yes. And then it collected down in the river. And what do we do with that river water? We use it to drink. Another demonstration illustrates how ground surface affects what runs off or what soaks in. What do they put on it to make it grow sometimes? That one. 
Fertilizer. Fertilizer, Thank yes. You. Okay. Now here's our natural nature filter. Are any chemicals put on this? No. 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 no these are our natural plants. So do you think it will come out clear? Yes. Do you think it will run off, off clear? Yes. Again using colored water, the students simulate chemical deposits on each surface. This is a surface runoff, so what would run off quickly during a storm, and this is what would infiltrate and come through the whole soil and root system, which can grab up or absorb many types of pollutants. Why is the grass running off and not the natives? Because it has more chemicals. It's not. The chemicals don't make it run off quicker. What makes it run off quicker is the sh are the short roots. That grass only has roots about this long. And the natives have roots that can go up to 15 feet deep. And so that allows more of the water to go into the ground rather than run off like this one, possibly with chemicals. Rain gardens are another way for water to be captured and treated on site. And it, this was something that was a natural fit into the green garden classroom and another tool for kids to learn about how uh, they can be connected to their environment. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of built eight inches down in the ground and it has native plants. A rain garden is uh, it's a natural depression in the landscape and what it does is it captures rainwater that runs off of impervious surfaces that are nearby, so that can be a rooftop like in the classroom, it can be sidewalks, uh, it can be your driveway, any place where you have a hard surface, um, you can dig a natural depression near it to capture the water off that surface before it runs off of your yard and to the nearby streets, which then in turn uh, takes that water to the gutter systems, the storm sewer systems, and then directly into our creeks. The Green Classroom's collection system also demonstrates how to harvest rainfall to keep it on site to water their food when rain doesn't come. These lessons are not just for today. They will stick with these children as they grow up to make a difference for the future. When you come out to the Green Garden Classroom, you really feel the, the mission, the magic of this classroom and this space and what it can do for kids because they can get out and have a lot of hands-on activities to learn about uh, their environment. You can make a difference. Keep Austin green.